Hi, I'm Anna. Hi, I'm Emma, and this is our Linearity Fano project. Let's begin by briefly describing JPEG image compression. JPEG is a widely used type of image compression that reduces the size of an image to save space when storing. As we move further into a, into a digitalized world, efficient storage becomes more and more crucial. This type of compression is capable of significantly reducing data, making it extremely powerful. However, there is a trade-off. During compression, images undergo discrete cosine transform, which is a type of lossy compression. This means some of the original image data is compromised and cannot be retrieved in the decompression process. As you can see in this example, the file size of the medium quality image is significantly less than the higher quality file size. Yet, if you look closely, the medium quality file is not as clear and somewhat pixelated. Depending on the use and circumstances, one might be better than the other. But overall, the more you are able to reduce an image's file size, the weaker it will be in quality. Before jumping right into DCT, it is important we understand how an image is broken down. A digital image is comprised of tiny blocks of color called pixels. Each pixel has a red, green, and blue component each of which take up one byte of data. As you can imagine, this would cause the total byte count to rise rather quickly. In the JPEG image compression process, images are converted into the YCBCR color space. This color space is also broken down into three components, luminance, blue chrominance, and red chrominance. Luminance describes the amount of light that gets emitted from the pixel, which is also thought of as the brightness and the chrominances on the other hand hold information about the color. It is advantageous to represent the image in this color space because the human eye is a lot more sensitive to changes in the luminance compared to the chrominances. Since there is little variation in the CV and CR components, we are able to remove them without seeing a significant change in, compressed, in the compressed image. Transitioning to this color space allows us to separate and keep the most essential information. The next step is splitting an image up into blocks that are 8 by 8 pixels. The image is divided in this way because of the amount of variation between the 64 pixels. In each block is small relative to variation in the whole image. And also, 8 by 8 block is more computationally efficient than a larger block. Right here we have the first three blocks. Um, in YCBCR color spaces from our flower example. As you can see, there is very little variation when zooming closely. Below is an example of the A by A block that has been broken up into these components. There is an observable differences in the variation between the Y component and the CB and CR component, which show that our eyes are more sensitive to difference, differences in luminance. We are able to compression the CBCR value significantly because when the variation is small, the average value is meaningful since the amount by which each pixel varies is particularly negligible. Since cosine is centered around zero, we have to center the component values around zero as well. Right now, they range from 0 to 255, so to center them, we have to subtract 128, the midpoint, from each value. Here are our two matrices. The original matrix containing the Y component values is on the left, and the shifted one is on the right. We obtain this matrix by subtracting 128 element-wise. After DCT, we have to divide by a quantization matrix. In this step, the amount of compression can be controlled. The standard level is 50, but if you want more compression, you can go to a lower level, or for less compression, you can go higher. Remember, there is a trade-off between storage size and quality. Now we can de-emphasize the higher frequencies. If you look closely at the table, the numbers increase as you go to the right and down. This area corresponds to the coefficients of higher frequencies. When we divide the quantization matrix, we are left with a lot of zeros in the bottom right half 
and just a handful of non-zero numbers in the top left corner. As it turns out, the image block can be represented by just these frequencies, while still appearing, relatively depending on the level of compression, identical to the original image. After this CT, there is one additional step to make your data storing even more efficient. To decrease the computational complexity, we need to sequence the coefficients. Most efficiently, this is done by sequential all the value following zigzag path, starting with the top left corner and reaching the bottom right. The coefficients are lined up in this order, which put ones with non-zero values towards the front, where the zeros is pushed to the end. Now, they are strate strategically lined up to increase the efficiencies of encoding process. Next, half encoding is applied once the long string of coefficient is obtained from the, the quantization process. After identifying the unique values and their corresponding frequencies, they can be ordered into a code tree. The tree is built from bottom up by adding nodes with the pairs that add up to the smallest frequency. Once the tree is complete, the branches of the tree get labeled with each a 1 or a 0. As we continue to build our tree in this way, it will be clear that values with lower frequency will be on the bottom and the higher one will be on the top. This is useful because the code attached to higher frequency values are... So, the last step is decompressing the image, which is essentially applying the inverse discrete cosine transform. In this half of the process, we go backwards and undo all the steps we just did. Since this is a form of lossy compression, we have lost some data that um, the compressed image will not exactly be the same as the original one. Depending on the level of compression, it is possible for the change not able to be detectable when viewing the compressed image. As you can see in the matrices, the values are not exactly the same. However, they stay in a range of about 8. So keep in mind, this is just the Y component of an 8 by 8 block. We're compressing an image, each component of every 8 by 8 block, where it goes through this process.